Sally, welcome to Pennsylvania's Capitol. We're just delighted to have your exhibit here on display. Thanks to the state government, to the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts and Pennsylvania um, Partners in the Arts Grants, I'm able to stay in Pennsylvania and do these photographs. Well, and, and we have so many residents of the 20th Senatorial District that you're featuring, uh, yes. so we'd yes. love to take a look at um, some of uh, our neighbors who are really showcasing a lost, a lost yes. art. Stay tuned for Focus on Pennsylvania. Perhaps no other state boasts a broader or deeper scope of American history than the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The Keystone State is blessed with a rich heritage, and one remarkable Pocono photojournalist is dedicating her life to document, preserve, and promote traditional artisans. People who use their hands in creative ways, making functional objects that today are typically done by machines, if at all. You're looking at the centerpiece of an exhibit known as Pennsylvania Hands. It was created specifically for display here in the east wing of the state capitol. This is a tinsmith, we have a rug maker, we have a basket weaver, a bowl maker, even someone who still makes horseshoes by hand. Now these are all the functional skills. I'm focusing on those skills that were needed by our society. They were originally called um, tradespeople. Now they're called artisans. Amazing, amazing work. And the concentration, and yet, if you look at him, he also is incredibly mischievous. <laughs> and a lot of them are. They are disciplined, they have a passion, they have a respect, and as we were talking, they slow you down. When you're with them and you're photographing them, see, I spend time, I, to me, photography is this. It isn't the lens, it's this. And when you and I are relating to each other, we have a human experience that I can then record and share with the world. What Grace explained to me is the first spinners were sheep. When they would rub their backs against branches, and then primitive people, most probably women, picked up these fibers and went, oh, we can use them. Well, right after she told me that story, I was out in her paddler, and I saw Aww. right against the wire of the fence just what she was talking about. It's fascinating. And I watched Grace spin, and it's, it's almost meditative. The, the, the rhythm of her foot against the pedal, the hand feeding the wool to the spindle, and there's a rhythm to it, and there's a piece to it that is really, really quite remarkable. Okay, this is Marie McCoy Howe. This particular craft is, is very special to me because my mother-in-law had um, a cottage business and did um, rag rug weaving and um, was featured in Country Living and sold her rag rugs around the country and around the world. It is just incredible to set the loom up. So She spends weeks setting up that loom. I, I went back several times in a, a couple of months period. The first time I met her, she was under the loom tying the knots. That was where she was. I, said, I, I set up my lights right away. It was fascinating. These people are enriching all our lives. Now, Juanetta is everybody's favorite. <laughs> she, is, she is a tatter, and she explained to me that tatting is the only kind of lace making that still cannot be made by machine. And it's all tiny, tiny knots. You can see, every, see these tiny, tiny, not the loops, but even yes. the knots that are holding the loops. That is what makes up the lace. This was made by her mother for her, and this is the christening bonnet that she made for her grandchild. So this is our family picture. Isn't that beautiful? I, I love that. What I found so 
remarkable about your um, display are the hands of people who are not people who are worried about being at a salon having their nails right. fixed. They are people who um, work very hard, and you, you can see the um, character in, of who they are. Yeah. They, they, they're hands who have embraced life. They really have. The quilters, um, what's fascinating to me is that women traditionally would get together and help each other, especially when we were pioneers and lived so far away from each other. They would find ways of helping each other. Quilting these were one of the big things. And there's been a resurgence in quilting guilds all over the country. And, and in northeastern Pennsylvania, yes. we have a proud tradition of quilting yes. um, displays around all of the Absolutely. Endless Mountains and the Pocono Mountains. It's just um, remarkable to see women getting back together and really being in, in, engaged in, and involved in it. Exactly. We have two quilting guilds represented here. It's the Milford Quilting Guild. We also have the Friends of the Heart here in the Greentown area. And I'm following both of them. Uh, they're doing some amazing work. And uh, I, I just love, love their work. I love listening to the, them talking to each other and helping each other on the loom. I want to thank you for your work, your vision, your creativity, and um, thank you for preserving what is an important part of Pennsylvania's history. Thank you. Thank you so much for your support of it. It means a lot to all of us, very much. And thank you for joining us. If you know of any artisan that practices concrete, functional skills, Sally would love to hear from you. Her website is amhands.com. This exhibit of Pennsylvania Hands is supported by Pennsylvania Partners in the Arts Grant from Jump Street Arts Council and the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts.